Hey everyone, this is your Sally Coach, and today we will be doing our addition practice problems for cryptorithms in this video. And we will be doing a step-by-step -step guide on how to solve them, so let's get started with this first cipher. Alright, so getting started with the cipher, we can see that there's this big table right here. Now this table may seem tempting to use, but it's just a way to trick you when solving the cipher to make you waste more time. Now, even though we want to be as concise, maybe organized and efficient with our cryptorhythm, we don't need to use this because this just wastes so much time that you could be using on other ciphers. So if you see this big type of table, please do not use it. So as we're going to start with the cipher, we can also see that we have this pattern that I showed you in our first video of that triangle pattern, F to M to I. Now, this is always going to be 9, 1, and zero. So we have m going to 1, m going to 1 right here as well. We also have i going to 0. Um, and we have f to 9. So once we have this, and let me make sure that I filled in all the letters, because that's extremely important. It may seem that there's not too many letters, but filling in letters really gets you to catch up on things that you may or may not know. So going back at this, so we can see that this word right here with the M, M can't have a constant after it. Like it can't be MT or maybe MN. It has to be M and a vowel. So that vowel is going to be um, A or E. So we know that 5 is going to be A or E. We can also see that in this space right here, F, and then we have some other constant. Now, it could be a constant, you know? It could be, um, we would think that it would be T, but we can't use T, we can't use N, but we do have R. So this would be A, maybe E, and maybe R. So we may have those types. We can look at that after. We saw for a 5 being A or E. So we can try looking for A or E, and we're going to use E first. Now, looking at where E stays, we have E being odd. So this one would be 5 right here. And that wouldn't make sense because we know that two numbers, if they're the same, since we have T and T, they're the exact same, T plus T can't equal to an odd number. It can't equal to 15 or 5 because let's say we had possibly... 3 plus 3, right? That would equal to 6. Two odd numbers don't equal an odd. It equals an even, going through the number theory. So we know that E can't be 5, and instead it's going to be A. So we have 5 going to A right here. So 5 to A. 5 and 5. And just like as I was saying, 3 could be R or E, but we just said that E can't be an odd number, so we know 3 is R. We're also going to have another R right here. And where else? That should be it. So we have R going to 3. So once we have this done, we can probably look at this column right here and make an assumption or... Maybe we can try solving it out to figure out what H can now be. So looking at this, we can see that we have A to 5 plus H, which we don't know, is going to equal to R, which is 3. This makes it that H can only be 8 because of the column ahead of it. Looking at the column ahead of it, we have I equaling to 0 plus E equaling to 5. Now, we know E can equal to A, right? So we would have to get 4. Now, we also can't have this column carrying over and making it so that h could be 7, like 5 plus 7 plus 1 equals 13. But no, since this one has a 0 in it, we know that this cannot carry over into the next column. So this can be 0 plus 4 equals 5, meaning that this column needs to carry over, saying that n plus a equaling to g must carry over. That also states that n has to be 6 or greater than 6. So that's pretty useful information, giving us e equaling to 4. We have e equaling to 4, e equaling to 4, 
an E equaling to 4. Let's also put it in here. Oh, so 4. And then we can also have H going to 8. So we would have H right here. And, oh, I missed an R. That should be it. Now, we're also going to go back to this column, right? We said before that this plus this is going to equal to whatever. So T can either be 2 or it can be 7. Now, we can try looking at our word sequencing to see how that works. Now, T being 2, how would that work? Term, termin or termag? That doesn't make sense, right? Even over here, frath, freeth. Yeah, it just does not make sense. So it would not be 2, it would be 7. T equals 7. So we would have T right here. And that's all. Um, now we can try aristocrating our way through. We can see, or we can just use math, really. We have 1 right here. 1 plus something plus 5 is equal to G. Now G... This could be 2, or it could be 6. Snurmag doesn't make sense, but German does. So we're going to have German Marine Fright. And that G is going to be a 2. Now, we don't need to fill this in. Remember, this is all that they're looking for. So you could have this entire thing filled out. And none of this filled out, and you would still get all points. If I left it like this, I would get all the points possible. Now, n is going to be 2, just to fill it out. I mean, n is going to be 6. And that will be all. So we have the answer, German Marine Fright, to this value of numbers. So this is going to be our first practice problem. We're going to do another one on addition. And then I'll make a separate video on subtraction crypto than problems if you need me to do those. So this one, I really just used aristocrating my way through and looking at word patterns, which is extremely important. Now, even if you do aristocrats and maybe you do like Baconians and all, those also require you to figure out word patterns. So I'd say learning how to do these word patterns is extremely important. For any cipher, all cipher, you do need to learn how to spot these word patterns fast and quickly so that you don't make any mistakes when you're solving out the cipher. So that's just my tips on how to solve this one, and we'll get to the next one later.